We're working at what does this do? It affects immediately advising. Because I know as a, as a professor that these people, some of them, I can direct them immediately to tutoring services, virtual or on campus, those who I see. I can also direct them into, in, in, uh, towards resources like the online learning center, which we're developing, that can help them. And these people, call them on the phone, hey, you're in time, let's, let's see if we can switch you to a more appropriate class. What are you studying, what do you need? And, and get them where they need to be so that their learning experience during the semester is a positive one and, and really contributes to their learning process. Okay, so this was something that we had never seen before. We hadn't done it, there was an exam, and what we did was just make everyone take it for the first time. And the, it was extremely interesting for us, okay? We have a significant number of people in these basic level courses that as new students who shouldn't have been there, okay? So, uh, retention. Lots of things we can deal with. Informs our advising, informs uh, just our, our, our awareness of where our students are, who they are, and, and actually some of them are hiding in the basic level courses and they turn into something imperfect. I'm like, okay, yes, they're, they're not supposed to be here. That's perfect, <laughs> okay. It's not that they got someone to help them, okay? Good, uh, questions about placement. No? Okay. Um, uh, the original project that I was assigned actually during the semester really wasn't having to do with placement tests. It was in this. Um, as uh, Rolando actually mentioned in his presentation, we're trying to provide those materials that can really support student learning, what they need especially those students in, that scored from zero to 15 on that placement test who need that extra help. Um, so we are de developing, it's in pro process, uh, an online learning center. Um, this is a collaborative effort. Uh, I'm working with the English component of that center. We have uh, uh, my dear friend Yvette Rivera working with math and Lillian, uh, Lillian, uh, huh? Valle. I don't know anyone's last name, excuse me. Um, it's Spanish, okay? Uh, so, we're working with those core subjects that we all know, they come in and academically, those are such a challenge for them, we lose them in that first year. Spanish, English, math, um, and we're developing materials. Uh, over the last year, excuse me, I worked with primarily grammar for the people who are in that basic level courses. Uh, level course, and then we have also writing, which this year I'm going to be focusing on more with the development of a, a writing center, um, reading skills and listening. So this is something that we'll be developing over time. Uh, what we are doing is making these materials available to all students, whether they are enrolled in an English class currently or not, in an area called the, the well, I call it the pod, they call it POD. Um, I like the idea of a pod, you know, it's like a little seed and you grow from there. Um, a pod, where we'll have learning activities with practice and then assessments as well so they can check their learning, go back, refer to, um, on a variety of different topics. So uh, that is something we are actively working on and uh, have really, really, high hopes that will have a significant impact on student retention in the long run. This, these materials will be available to, to them throughout their college career um, and even to the external community. So we're uh, very excited about that. Okay, uh, part of keeping students in class is making sure that they have the materials they need to support their studies. Um, what I found is that most of my students uh, didn't have a textbook, okay? And the people, the, the modules are there, the material is there, but they need additional support, okay? And the time came around on our campus where they're like, oops, new edition, you guys need to change your books. So all the publishing companies came by, knocking on the door, they're giving you their new editions, their, their new series, 
you know, and they want to sell you the whole package. And I thought, wow, it's an incredible opportunity. Let's look carefully at what we need, what our students need, what we have, and, and what would be the best for them. Um, we can always make our own decisions, but what we decided is actually survey the students about their preferences, okay? So we went to the, the courses in the basic English program first, 1101, two and three, and put up a, a very brief survey. Four questions. First off, did you purchase the textbook? Right here, 60%, no, no book. Um, we asked them, because this was an idea that came from the faculty, okay, what if there was just one book for all three courses? What, do you like that idea? Oh, yes, definitely, they like that a lot. Um, and then we asked them, would you purchase that book if it's one book for all three courses, and guess what happened? 91% said, yeah, we like that. We like that idea, just one investment, and I can use that book for you know, multiple courses. Um, then we asked them, well, online, we always have the problem, but you know, students in Japan, oh, professor, I ordered my book, it takes three weeks to get there. I don't have the book. Oh, it still hasn't got there. Exam one's coming around. Oh, I still don't have my book. Well, an ebook seems like the logical solution for us, but we wanted to know how the students would react to that. So we asked them, Do, would you prefer a regular print version of the book or an ebook, and why? Let me know. Um, in the end of the day, at the end of the day, they, they really like print books. They, it's like their security blanket. Some of them they actually say, I like to write in it. I want to keep it on my shelf as a reference. Uh, four or five people actually wrote that. Um, Ebooks, what's attractive about them? Uh, portability, that, that's the major thing. And they, they all price. Price is the big deal. And that at the end of the day, 56% said they would purchase a digital version of the book if it were cheaper than the print version. They'll do it if it's cheaper. Okay, so looking at these results, um, what did we do? Um, my good friend, Ana Munoz, and I got together, analyzed what skills were, were, skills were really fundamental to the courses, what did we need to reinforce, what actually could we eliminate, because we, we did eliminate some stuff, we'll just put it as stuff, because it wasn't the, weren't the core skills. Um, and we came up with a custom book in collaboration with Cengage um, that was created for all three courses, 1101, 2, and 3. We used nine different books, four different series. Uh, there's like 101 changes in text, um, but we made our custom book. What did we get to keep? Um, multimedia from the, the, the textbook the one series that we had started off with. So we have all those cool videos. We have listening that's not always my voice or the same voices uh, that we could maintain from that original um, publishing company. What we finished that book, um, it was just published. We are going to start using it Tuesday in all our courses. We presented it to our full-time faculty in the regular classroom guess what, they adopted it. Price goes down a little bit, so we're, we're excited about that. Um, what were we able to negotiate with the publishing company? Three year access. Three years at, of access to the ebook on, um, oh, what do we use? Uh, vital source, thank you. Ooh, I, uh, on vital source. So when they purchase an electronic version of the book, they'll have access to that book for three years. Uh, students here, they're moving. They're here this semester, they might not be here next semester, they might end up, now they're in Florida, uh, but that, that book can, can follow them for the, the following three years. Then, we actually prepared print versions of the book as well. So we have both formats available to our students, but it's customized to what we have identified as what they need, and hopefully, that will help us keep them. They'll have 
better materials to support their, their online learning, okay? So that is something that we're really excited about. Um, during the analysis of what we needed for this custom book, we, we discovered there's all this stuff that maybe we shouldn't focus on so much. We, we need to focus on these core uh, skills. Let's give them more of what they really need, do it well, okay? So uh, the result was a complete revision of all three basic level courses for the basic level this semester. Uh, we reduced the modules from nine down to six. So three modules were eliminated and other things were added, okay? But it could, the part of this process has resulted in new materials for us, new courses, curricular revision. Okay. In addition to all of the above, we have uh, basically been working to integrate our online courses into what was the campus assessment plan. We, we really, uh, they, at one point there were two separate animals and we're trying to bring everything together to a certain extent. Um, we're doing that, our student-centered projects online requiring oral communication and written communication are directly linked to what we're doing in the regular classroom as part of our assessment plan. Um, in addition, we're exploring new tools that students can use to hopefully uh, support them during their learning process online. Uh, this semester, we're also doing a pilot of Grammarly, um, especially focused on the writing skills to see if that is a tool that students will uh, be able to use and, and, and a, that will contribute to their academic success. In addition, we use Starfish for student tracking um, to help uh, support our retention efforts. Okay, so that's a couple of the things that I have personally been working on this past semester. All of our projects are ongoing. So our, the pod is in development and we will be uh, next year, hopefully, here presenting on how that has affected our, our retention rates.